Achtung! Achtung! He escaped Germany, hid out in Argentina, and now has moved to America, where he finally feels at home. Here's America's favorite Nazi, Hans Himmler. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti with America's favorite Nazi, Hans Himmler, for a Nazi's take on the news. Thank you very much, Herr Salenti, and it is my pleasure, as usual, to be here with you again. There is loads of news this time from since last week that is dear to a Nazi's heart. Well, let's start with what's going on in London. London's a flames. Four days of riots. We said this was going to happen. When the money stops flowing down to the man on the street, the blood starts flowing in the street. This thing is out of control, Hans. It was the English, because that is why they lost their empire. If it was the Nazis in there, there would be no such problem. We would have ringed all of London with tanks. We would have the stormtroopers going in there with the machine guns blazing. We would call upon our allies from NATO and especially from America, like the police that broke up Pittsburgh when, and the ones that went in with the people who had garden boxes and things like that. We would fly them over and they would wipe out the rioters and those that stayed alive. We would have railroad cars waiting for them and we would have, we would have prepared a place in the new Olympic Stadium where we would put the rioters and the protesters and that would be the end of such a thing. You know, they're saying that it began because of policemen, you know, shot this guy and, and, and there's some racial undertones or overtones to it, but I think it's much bigger than that. I think what's going on, this is what I said that was going to happen. When people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. And whether it's in the Tunisians, the Egyptians, whether it's in Bahrain, whether it's in, whether it's in Spain, whether it's in Greece, or whether it's in the UK, we're seeing what's happening as the economic systems are collapsing. They're collapsing in front of our eyes. Yeah, but there's a solution to that. And the solution is what we had the final solution. And the final solution now does not apply to the Jews. It applies to everybody that is rioting and protesting. It is very simple. So that's the way you're going to solve this. What other way is there? Otherwise, what are you going to do? Take the money away from the rich and give it to the poor so that the poor are stopped rioting? No, you've got to put down the unrest. Look, the UK is running this Libyan war now, this little chicken hawk uh, Cameron, you know, these tough guys, Haig, you know, all these, what's that guy, Liam Fox, Fox. And, and, you know, they're running a war now that they can't afford to run. The same thing in the United States. I mean, these countries are all at war. They're all these NATO people taking the money, going to war while the people are losing everything. Well, that is what the money is for, to go to war and to kill people and to take over their countries. Of course that is what we are doing. Yeah, that's a Nazi's take on the news. Yeah, yeah. of course that is a Nazi's take. That is why I have moved to America. Now, lots of places I could move to. I could move to England. You can move to England, too. Yeah, but they got surveillance all over the place. And everybody keeps track of you wherever you go with your car. England is getting pretty Nazified. All right. And the beer is better. <laughs> all right, let's move on. Right. Look, look what else is going on. The markets are collapsing. The markets are collapsing around us. And what they're doing is that in the news, they keep telling us, here, this is, from, this is from the New York Times. What do you think about the New York Times? Well, I like the New York Times. What you call it, their toilet paper of record? Because the New York Times, unlike some of the other papers, the New York Times, it looks like you are reading news, but really you are reading news written by journalists who have studied at the Goebbels Institute of Journalism. So what looks like news is actually propaganda. So it, when this upsets me, when I read a thing out of Saturday's toilet paper a record, as the markets are collapsing around the world, this guy, uh, Ron Lieber, L-I-E-B-E-R, I'm sure he's, he's a... He writes for your money. I'm sure he's an expert analyst who's made a lot of great forecasts because this is what he says. In market moments like this, it's always tempting to do something really big and bold with our investments, our investments. He's, you know, we're all in this together. You know, he gives me money every week, our investments. Here's a bad idea that's very likely to occur 
to the fight or flight animal within us all. Our investments within us all. You know, me and Ron, you know, we're like this, you know? Yeah, here's what he says. Scale way back on stocks in parts of the developed world with economic woes and put the proceeds someplace far, far away in emerging market stocks or gold or foreign currencies. Gold or foreign currencies. Yeah. I wrote in the Trends Journal over a year ago what my investments were. Yeah. Unlike him, you know, telling what to do, I just say what I did. And I put my money in gold and Swiss francs. Now, Swiss francs against the dollar, the dollar's down about 30%. Just in the last month, gold has gone up $200 an ounce, and this guy's saying it's wrong. Robert, it is wrong. You are unpatriotic. You are just looking out for yourself while everybody else is supposed to keep their money in the market and go down with the ship. And that's what he's saying I should do? That's what you should do. Yeah, you are being very unpatriotic, and if we had you in Germany, we would put you in jail. A wave of worry threatens to build on itself. Yeah, well, a wave of worry. It is a tsunami of worry that builds upon itself. And they are worried that they, Lieber, by the way, his name means lover in German. Who does it mean? Lover. Lover? Yeah, not, not you, somebody, a woman that you sleep with. <laughs> this is the thing with the, with the, with, with the worry and these, these kinds of things. These guys, these guys, they are the, the drug pushers. That's, that's the optimism opium that they are pushing. And if people go and do what they want to do, what they're thinking about doing, what it's talking about there, and rescue themselves from the things, the stockbrokers on Wall Street will lose lots of money. And that is what he's worried about, because if Wall Street loses money, <coughs> the whole country goes down in flames, as we know. You really believe that stuff? Well, that is what the toilet paper of record says. All yeah. right, all right. Let's move the on government. here. Yeah. You know, out in Los Angeles, uh, the police just raided this place called Rawsome, R-A-W-E-S-O-M-E. And, and it's a place, a club. You belong to this club so you can buy raw or an organic product. The stormtroopers moved in there. The Gestapo. Yeah, the yeah. Garden Gestapo. Yeah. They moved in there, and with a flatbed truck, they took $70,000 worth of raw materials, raw foods, organic produce away. And they said that these people broke the law. And even though they were club members, they give money to, it's not a business. And the people work there, and they just exchange food. They don't work for money. They broke them. Now, now, how could they do something like this? They weren't bothering anybody. What do you mean, how could they do something like that? They are the food Gestapo, and they can do whatever they like. I mean, they don't have much chance, the food Gestapo, to beat people up and things like that. So they have to do something, and this is what they do. And it's not that they stole everything from the shop. They took $70,000 of raw organic produce and dairy products, and they were allowed to take representative samples. So in this case, everything was a representative everything sample. Everything was a representative no, 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 sample. No, 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 that yeah. is absolutely not and, and what we would have done in Germany. Now what they did, they locked this guy up. They locked a couple of these people up. And after they let them loose, on, you know, they have a gag order. They can't even talk about this thing. No, well, that is what a gag order is for, so that they can't talk about it, because otherwise some people might get upset about what the Gestapo are doing. When we were, had the, our Gestapo, they couldn't, there was no internet or anything like that, so we could do whatever we wanted. Now it's more difficult for the Gestapo to function because some of the people have not yet been brainwashed into understanding that the Gestapo is doing everything for people's own good. What do you mean, oh good? These people don't want to eat food that has, you know, like from Monsanto, drug hormones and all of this, this drug-induced and hormone-induced genetically modified foods. They want to eat raw foods. It should be their choice to eat what they want. Absolutely not. It is not their choice to eat whatever they want, because if they eat whatever they want, maybe Monsanto go out of business and things like that, and they stop selling pesticides and uh, chemical fertilizers and things like that. Much more important that people do as they are told to do. They are free. This is a free country in America, and people are free to obey orders. Free to obey orders. That well, is the only freedom these, that counts. These people, they, don't, they want to drink raw milk, 
and, and the government is saying you can't drink raw milk. By the way, what did they, what did they recall, about 30 million, 36 million turkeys or something from that uh, factory farm? Uh, what was it? Uh, Auschwitz farm over yeah, there, the turkeys? Auschwitz yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 30 million Those or 36 chickens. million? Those was eggs. I no, think. no, no, oh, just last week, some turkeys, well, yeah. So, well, actually, all of those things don't matter. What matters is, I mean, who wants to drink milk from a dirty cow, a living cow? It's got to go through the process and have the bovine uh, hormones and all of those gross things in it, so it makes it fit to drink in a nice plastic container. So you sure. think it, it, it's not safe to drink? I mean, they weren't people were drinking milk before, you know, it was pasteurized. You know, throughout history. No, look here. In the, in the article, it explains. The biggest concern is really with children. Yeah, that because is right. Because pathogens that could be in raw milk can be extremely dangerous for the classically at risk. Yeah, well, and you know who is classically at risk? Almost everybody. You give them unpasteurized milk right from the cow, you put them on the chair, and you watch them become paraplegics in front of your eyes. Is that what you did over in Germany? No, we had other solutions for the classically at risk. Yeah? Yeah. So you mean to tell me, how about all these people that have been drinking milk over the, over, throughout history? Yeah, well, they're all dead, right? Throughout history. Every single one of those people historically is dead. It is from drinking milk from the cow. There you have it. A Nazi's take on the news. I'm Gerald Salenti with Hans Zimmler. And, as always, uh, Herr Salenti. Heil Obama! Heil Hitler!